Pedro from ANP Reacts. I'm here today with Temo. Did I say it right? That's good. That's good. All right. From Winter Sun. We're here today to talk. How are you today? Really good. Thanks, man. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I want to thank you for taking the time to sit down with me today to do this interview. I really appreciate it. Sure. It's a pleasure. So let's get started. The first question that I have for you is Vakin 2018, the show this past summer. How was that? That was pretty incredible. I mean, uh, we played Vakin last time, 2006. So it had been a while since we were there last time. And it was already big back then. But now the festival had grown quite a lot. And I think this year it was just 75,000 people. So a huge festival, kind of like the the, the mecca of uh, metalheads in a way. Uh, so great vibe at the festival. Uh, we arrived there already uh, early on, so we got to uh, feel the, the festival a little bit uh, more than last time. Last time we played there, it was like uh, we rushed to the stage, like we arrived half an hour before the show and warmed up in the in the shuttle to the to the, the festival and then straight to the stage. And then I think we left for the next festival pretty much right after. But this time we had a lot of time before the show, although we played early on during the day. And then we just had a lot of free time, like signing session and then a few interviews and then, then just hanging out, watching some other bands and, and uh, enjoying the nice uh, backstage uh, catering and, and uh, just meeting, meeting friends from other bands. And, and hanging out, so it's nice. As a musician, do you prefer the larger festivals like Vakken, or you prefer the more intimate settings with the smaller venues? Um, both have their ups and downs, I think. Uh, of course, smaller venues are more intimate. You get more kind of interaction with the fans, uh, especially the first row uh, that are usually the most you know active fans anyway. Uh, the hardcore fans are in the first rows, but then, you know, festival like Buck and the first row is like uh, 50 meters away from you. So you, you kind of see them, but you don't see much. And then, you know, anything further than that, you don't really, you don't really uh, interact with much. Uh, but of course, it's a cool feeling seeing so many, you know, people uh, almost as far as you can see you see people. So. Yeah, it's a sea of... It's a sea of people. The I, I saw some of the live streams, and it's like you never, you don't see the end. Yeah, you just, pretty much. You just see people. It, does it get hectic? Like you said, this time you had some time to to hang out, see some of the other bands. Uh, th does it normally get hectic, and you don't have a chance for that? You're kind of just flying in from show to show. Um, it depends a bit. Um, nowadays, we try to arrange a little bit more relaxed schedule if possible. Um, we just uh, I figured out that it's it's nicer for everybody, you know, if the schedule is not uh, not too tight. Uh, so for Wacken, it was really nice that it was the only festival, you know, during the weekend. So so we could stay there, you know, as long as we want. Now the big tour is coming up. This big North American tour that I've been waiting for for years. Uh, you guys start off in Philadelphia September 14th. You finish off in New York October 14th. It's a month-long North American tour that starts, for those people that are not aware, it starts on the east coast of the U.S. and it finishes on the east coast of the U.S. You guys go from the east coast to the west coast, through Canada, back to the east coast. I mean, you're, it, it's, a, it's a huge tour, a lot of traveling. Are, are you guys excited? Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's really great to get back to US and, and Canada. And the last tour was 2013. We did similar kind of trip. Uh, back then it was 27 shows uh, all around. Uh, this time it's a lot of the same cities and a and, uh, few cities that we haven't played yet. So, so it's going to be exciting to see uh, hopefully a lot of the same faces and a lot of new faces as well. Has this tour been in the works for a long time? It was this something that was it was it hard to put together considering the duration and how many cities you guys are hitting this year? Um, yeah, there was actually some challenges because we had a few different options. Um, we, we were offered some support spots with other bands, and uh, we were thinking about doing that first. But uh, then in the end, we figured out that we want to do our own headlining tour rather because we haven't been there in such a long time. 
And uh, anyway, we figured out that during this touring period, four seasons uh, touring period, we probably won't be able to do more than one tour just in the North America. So, so then rather do the headlining, headlining tour. And then I think the, uh, the booking was finalized probably sometime early this year. Uh, so yeah, usually this kind of, kind of tours nowadays have, have to be prepared at least uh, you start a year before to, to figure out things and usually then at least half a year before you have everything booked because so many bands are touring nowadays so all the all the best clubs for best dates get booked you know so early on nowadays. Did you guys consider doing any shows by request in North America? It's, these shows have been really popular in Europe. You guys have done them in Finland. You've done them in Germany. You've done them in Austria. Was there any consideration going into this tour that perhaps pick one or two or perhaps even three spots during the North American tour and do by request shows? Um, we were thinking about that, and uh, and yeah, it's been it's been great doing those in Europe. First, the idea really came. Um, because uh, we did kind of similar areas in, in the Europe. Uh, first, we did our own headlining forest tour at the end of 2017, and then we did the uh, Arch Enemy support tour at the beginning of 2018, and then still wanted to play some shows in the places that we didn't uh, get to yet. Um, and also Finland, we played kind of two times, so we didn't want to play the same show. First, we wanted to do the Forest Seasons the album show, and then we wanted to make something something you know different so still the, the people who saw the first show don't have to see the same show again but uh, with uh, with North America a little bit different because we haven't been there in, in such a long time so so we kind of uh, want to represent the, the forest seasons show which is on the other hand it it has you know the set list will have pretty much probably most of the songs that would be or what would have, what have been voted on the by request shows anyway. It's kind of like uh, there's a couple of special songs that don't get played so often, and those might get voted on the by request, but otherwise it's still the same favorites kind of for everybody, and those we still try to play at every show. Are you guys going to be having uh, any VIP packages during this North American tour? Uh, yes. Um, there's going to be... Um, we were thinking about this for a long time as well, and we did previously some meet and greets and, and stuff like that. Um, but we figured out that um, doing like meet and greet for a lot of people that always takes a toll in a way because you you know end up hanging out an hour or sometimes two hours be speaking to people, and you know then you have to do a show in the evening. And if you do this every day, then the chances are that uh, you know that starts to take take it its toll especially on the on the singing voices of, of everybody uh, because yeah if, if the uh, option is either spend two hours you know talking with with a lot of people or two hours resting sometimes the resting although it's kind of boring it's kind of needed on the on the hectic touring schedule so so this time we figured out that we still want to try to offer something special for the fans um, but I'm not going to do an official meet and greet thing so what we're going to do is this, uh, we call it VIP uh, merge access and sound check. So what that is, is basically uh, for 50 bucks, people get a 50 buck gift card to the merchandise stand and they get there before the doors open. So they basically get an early access to the merchandise stand. And then as a free bonus, they get to see the winters and sound check. It's going to be a limited amount, small amount of people that get brought in for the shows. And then uh, they see the song check, they do this merch shopping um, the, with the gift card. If they want to buy something else as well, you know, they get the first chance uh, to do that and, uh, and then see the show later on. This to me sounds like a great deal. I mean, like, it's it's it, to me it's it's really cool. So for fifty, so you pay fifty dollars, you get a fifty dollar voucher to the merch stand. You get to go in early, and you get to go and you get to see the sound check. Right. So, right. Wh where are you making any money? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we kind of wanted to, uh, in a way, uh, give away, uh, give, give back to the fans, and what we're doing is. Uh, we're doing this pre-sale, uh, so the crowdfunders get the first chance to 
purchase uh, those those uh, VIP tickets, and uh, we think they're going to sell out pretty fast. Um, but uh, yeah, this this way we kind of want to give back to the fans and, and those those who anyway are going to you know buy a lot of merch, and this is a great deal for them. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this is incredible news as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I wish everybody was as giving as you guys are because this is incredible. From a fan's perspective, it's incredible. I, I, I think these are going to get picked up like hot cakes. Yeah, we, we hope so. We, we thought about, like I said, we thought about this for, for a while and what, what could we do still to, to keep back to the fans. And, and uh, yeah, the, the uh, fans have really, you know, they have given a lot for us, like the, the crowdfunding, all the support that we've, we've had uh, through the hard times, a lot of waiting for, for the release and, and all that. So so we're, we're happy to you know, give back. I have a couple more questions for you about the tour. Um, you guys have Neo Blivascaris and Sarah Longfield as your supporting bands. Uh, how did you guys come to that decision to add those two uh, as your supporting bands for this North American tour? Um, I think originally the idea came from our booking agent. Uh, they they send out the message to you know the labels that they've worked with previously, and, and then these names came up with we were familiar with uh, nail with scars beforehand, um, and we had been thinking about you know doing something uh, with them at some point anyway. So so this seemed like a convenient uh, chance to do it. Uh, Sarah Longfield, on the other hand, we didn't know before, but then uh, yeah, we went, we were pointed out that yeah, she's this, uh, uh, she's pretty popular on YouTube, and we checked out that yeah, yeah, it's uh, pretty cool stuff that she's doing. So we thought that yeah, I think uh, it's going to be an interesting package, you know, uh, kind of everybody brings their own fans, and still there's uh, some some uh, similar similarity between the artists as well. So I think it's going to be a cool package and nice show. Yeah, I, I think the cool thing about it is that there are some similarities, but yet still every band is very different in their own way. So sure. you, you kind of don't get a show where every band sounds the same one after the other. Everybody has something similar, but yet different. So it gives a, a more robust lineup, if you will, don't you think? That's, that's a good way to put it. I, I wanted to go back a little bit. You said that sometimes you need those two hours to rest. How hectic is for you the life on, on, on the bus, on the road, especially for a tour this long, uh, so extensive, like I said, from the East Coast to the West Coast, back to the East Coast. Is it hard for you to remain sane when you're stuck on the bus with, with the gang? Yeah, well, remaining sane is maybe, uh, maybe hard, but uh, yeah, a lot of stupid jokes get thrown around, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, that I think helps people to, stay more or less sane throughout the tour. Uh, but um, personally, I, I, I love the, the touring life lifestyle. Um, um, our conditions on the tour have always been pretty pretty good. And so we've been always kind of fortunate on, on that sense, uh, being able to go with our own light, nightliner and, you know, uh, whenever there's no shower, then you get to take a hotel room and stuff like that, which I know, you know, a lot of bands can't afford to do that, so so we're really kind of, uh, fortunate to to uh, be doing that that way. Um, the the daily schedule, yeah, of course. Sometimes the challenge is when you do the show, the, the whole day is kind of preparation until the show time, and then there's show time. You want to be, you know, your most energetic at you know late in the night, and then after that. You would still, you know, need to get to bed at a decent time and not, you know, stay up until four or five or six in the morning, which then easily kind of turns into that because then the next day the only thing that you need to do sometimes is just get up for the sound check, which happens two or three o'clock in in the afternoon. So sometimes there's this you get into this limbo of you know sleeping rhythm turning upside down because after the show you have so much adrenaline in, in your blood that you don't get to sleep so easily. But I try to avoid that. I, I uh, uh, yeah, try to stay active and, and do something uh, during the day. A little workout even at the venue if, if there's no time to, you know, see the city. Or if there's time, then I try to go for a walk or or, or do something else, and then just uh, stay in the bus or or stay 
just just stay in the backstage room and also now like in this tour i'm uh, occupying myself pretty much uh, uh, all the time with the with the lessons so doing guitar lessons at any any spot that there's no no band work uh, involved so so yeah the biggest challenge is of course staying healthy because and then if you can't stay healthy then then it's really hard uh, because you still have to perform at your best best every night so so you know try to not not to party too much and and uh, yeah just uh, uh for me personally i just uh, um, try to eat as healthy as possible and you know do a little workout every once in a while and, uh, so i guess when you're on tour you you can call in sick uh yeah i mean sometimes it, well, I don't think we ever had to cancel a show because of that. Uh, like uh, on, the, on some of the European shows, Jukka got really sick now, and, and he had to uh, step out of the of those shows. But then we still played uh, with the with the bass coming from the backing tracks uh, instead of him being on stage. But yeah, uh, we, we usually try to make the show happen, even if you know somebody's not feeling very well. I, I wanted to touch on the guitar lessons, but before I do, I have one more question about this tour. On the second last show of the tour, you guys are joining forces with another huge tour that's hitting North America, which is Amorphous. Uh, how did the idea, I mean, this is almost the festival kind of lineup when you mix, when you merge these two huge tours together. Uh, how did the idea uh, come about to join forces with Amorphous that who's already in North America as well and have this huge show? Um, I believe this was probably the, the organizer of the of the festival who probably then uh, talked with both our uh, booking agent and Amorphous uh, booking agent. We didn't have uh, really much to do with that. We were basically offered these shows and, and then only actually later on we got to know that, oh, by the way, the Amorphous guys are playing here as well. But it's, it's cool. It's, uh, it's going to be a hectic day because uh, six bands on the same stage, uh, same night. Or maybe it's even more. At least six bands, uh, but it's it's nice to see the, the Amorphis guys there for sure. Yeah, seven actually. Okay, seven. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, going back to the guitar lessons, you're offering personal guitar lessons during the tour. Now, are, are those lessons in person or online while you're on tour, or both? Uh, these are just in person. So at the menu. Uh, usually, pretty much right after getting, um, I set up my gear somewhere backstage. Usually, like a little bit remote uh, production office or something where there's a little privacy. And then I have my setup with with uh, some of these headsets, which are kind of closed. So even if there's uh, even if there's some no noise happening on stage, somebody sound checking, you can still kind of be in your own bubble with the with the microphone and, and, and you know hear each other uh, laptop and my sound card uh, for guitar sounds and uh, also have the guitars available for students so nobody has to you know carry their own guitar if they don't want and I started doing this uh, during the, the previous North American tour back in back in 2013 and it's uh, it pretty popular back then and then I kept on doing it in, in Europe as well and uh, yeah, now now it's uh, um, yeah it's it's gonna be a lot of lessons on, on this tour as well. I think I've got a, um, some days are gonna be uh, many hours of, of teaching already. So I have to figure out like I said earlier, like every every free slot time, I'm gonna be pretty much doing lessons there. What do you prefer? Do you prefer uh, lessons for beginners or do you prefer to work with already established guitar players that are looking at just improving their own style and, and their own way of playing? Which one do you prefer? Um, I don't really mind the, the, uh, the level so much. What, what uh, makes it, of course, more, more um, fun for me is if the student is really into it and if, if they're willing to learn and you know if they if they if they want to um, absorb all the information and, and if they're just into it then it doesn't really matter much if, if it's you know beginner stuff or or uh, or advanced stuff or you know anything in between now if you could give one tip to any person 
as a beginner, let's say me, I've never played guitar, but I want to start to start play guitar tomorrow. I want to give up my career as a cowbell player and I want to become a guitar player. What would be that one tip that you would give somebody like me who's who's picking up a guitar for the first time? Um, one simple tip would be probably finding a good teacher and, and taking some lessons in the beginning at least uh, because nowadays it's it's more tempting than ever to you know just open YouTube and Google you know your first guitar lesson or whatever and then take it from there but uh, the challenge is that because there's so much information then it's hard to kind of filter what is the you know good stuff and what is not so good stuff but uh, then finding a good teacher um, um, then you can have immediate feedback from the teacher. Um, so I think in the beginning, especially, that can make the learning curve uh, much smoother uh, instead of learning something wrong in the video and then in the next video, uh, seeing somebody else showing it different way. Um, of course, there's still this challenge that, okay, how do you know who is the good teacher when you're trying to find, a, find that teacher? But then asking around uh, somebody who's experienced, uh, and who has a uh, good reputation, then that, uh, that's usually uh, a good sign. And, uh, and of course, uh, uh, finding a teacher also who's inspiring, I think that's important. Uh, the very first guy who I took ever lessons with was a jazz player. And at the time, at the time I, I was so into metal and didn't know anything about jazz that uh, that wasn't a good match. But, uh, but uh, then I luckily found a more metal guy uh, right after that I, I started doing more lessons with. But I think that's also important to find find a teacher that inspires you um, and that you can create a personal connection with. I have a question for you about that because uh, growing up, uh, my brother uh, plays instruments. He plays a keyboard, he plays guitar. And when he was learning how to play guitar, he, uh, back, I, I mean, we're talking about like 40 years, 30 years ago. He was told that first you have to learn how to play acoustic before you move on to learn how to play electric guitar. But now I see people going straight to the electric. Does it make really a difference which one do you start with? Could you, like if you want to learn how to play metal, you tell your, your instructor, hey, I want to learn how to play metal. I want to go straight to an electric. Or do you really need to start from the basics and, and start off with acoustic first? What uh, do you recommend? Um, I would say there's no need to start with the acoustic first. Uh, there's points why starting with the acoustic uh, is sometimes um, easier because it's more affordable. You can get a okay sounding acoustic guitar cheaper than a set of electric guitar and an amplifier and a cable and, and all that you need for that. Um, then on the other hand, cheap acoustic guitar, you might get more problems with that than with a cheap electric guitar, especially like with the, the height of the strings might be so high that, you know, it's going to be really pain in the butt to, to learn playing guitar with, with that. And then on the other hand, if you get a classical guitar that has nylon strings, uh, then those are much softer for your fingers and that, that's sometimes nice for a beginner to, to learn your chords and, and uh, some basic stuff with, uh, with the classical guitar like that. Um, but I don't see any any point why not to start straight with electric if that is what you want to play. I have one more question for you about uh, learning how to play guitar. Have you ever given a lesson to somebody where you felt at the end of the lesson that this guy or this girl, whatever the case might be, should instead become a doctor because there's no way they'll ever be a guitar player? Have you ever felt that way after a lesson? Um. Not, not really. Uh, usually, there's always at least hope. Uh, um, yeah, perhaps somebody in the beginning of the lesson has has had that kind of feeling that yeah, they're not sure if, if anything's gonna you know come of this. But usually, at the end of the lesson, there's still you know uh, uh, you get some ideas and some inspiration to to then. Uh, um, ideas how to how to uh, make it easier or make it better or make it more what you want to you know do with the instrument um, so that's definitely a big part of what I do kind of uh, guiding people in the right direction not 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 telling you know exactly what you need to do but kind of uh, uh, 
yeah, helping them to sometimes just find their their own way. And also, uh, a lot of times, um, also telling people that you know there, there's nothing wrong with you know becoming a doctor and just playing guitar for fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. if that's what you, what you want to do. Then uh, you know, I, I never try to judge people. You know that you know how much you should practice or or you know what your goal with guitar playing should be because everybody has their own own uh, ideas what they want to do with the guitar and i think that's how it should be and then then i just try to you know make the path to that uh, where they are you know trying to go and i try to make that path easier okay i like i have one more question <laughs> uh do you get stoked when when colleagues of yours when like established guitar players reach out to you for help for some lessons Th does that like does that make you feel good? Like, wow, you know, like this is really cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, that's definitely a, a, a pretty overwhelming, overwhelming feeling. Uh, um, has happened a few times uh, lately, and uh, yeah, now I've been teaching since two thousand six, so about twelve years now, and and then. Just recently, it's been more and more kind of professionals as well, uh, we, which is really fun to do. And, and uh, it has its own challenges. And the beginners have their own challenges, and every level has their own challenges. But but the professionals then really need to kind of uh, dig uh, one level deeper uh, and think about the the stuff that that we work together with. Um, and uh, it's really rewarding then to be able to help somebody that I, I look up to uh, for sure and, and has also happened that you know somebody I give a lesson to then after the lesson I, I ask that you know next time maybe you give me a lesson you know, about some <laughs> other stuff you learn. Uh, you know, maybe I give a technique lesson and then somebody gives me uh, something like a jazz theory or something so sometimes we do trade-off which is fun as well. I want to change gears a little bit. Winter Sun debut album will be 15 years old next year. Do you yeah. guys have any have any plans in mind in order to celebrate this huge milestone? Yes. Um, yeah, we're gonna do 15th anniversary uh, shows, which is basically then gonna be playing the whole first album from the beginning to the end. Um, uh, we're going to be doing mainly around the festival season from May to August. So it's going to be festival shows, uh, some some club shows in between as well. We have uh, a few booked so far. We have two announced. Uh, there's going to be more announced soon. Um, I think we're going to be doing more in Central Europe where the, the you know, a lot of festivals happen uh, during the summer there. Um, hopefully we get to go a little bit further as well uh, but uh, not not specific plans about that yet that sounds amazing would you guys consider perhaps um, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself but uh, a live release of one of those shows as a celebration of the anniversary as well or or maybe have some special merchandise around that time that fans can purchase as a symbol of the anniversary uh, yes, for sure. Uh, it's going to be uh, special things that we're going to do. Of course, new stage setup. Uh, you know, we never had the even the the first album backdrop or anything. We kind of only stepped into that uh, stage setup at the time time one period. So we're going to first time have the the winters and album backdrops and stuff and and uh, totally new show uh, based based on that and new merchandise as well, like you mentioned. Uh, we're gonna. We have a lot of ideas already, already on the table. We're probably gonna do some some new special stuff like uh, song related merchandise for the first first album, stuff like that. Maybe re-releases of the vinyls, which a lot of people have been asking about. Um, yeah, uh, that, that is surprising because when I talk to Yari about vinyls, he's not a huge fan of vinyls. Right. Right. But there is a huge demand now in the market for vinyls. I see, like, when I go to shows, everybody wants to buy the vinyls. Yeah, yeah. We still uh, do do have the Forest Seasons uh, vinyl, at least the basic one, and sometimes even the, the box version, which has the, the 
four seasons and then it has the the Tuska life uh, in the same box as well. Um, but uh, the Time One and self-titled have been sold out for, for a long while and uh, sometimes people have to pay stupid prices on, on eBay to get one. Uh, so I think it would be nice to do some some kind of re-release. I want to ask you something about other projects that you've worked on. Uh, I, I follow you on social media, as a lot of people watching this follow me on social media. You've posted a few things that you've done with side projects where you worked on guitar solos for other bands or some guitar riffs for other bands, some music, some melodies. Is there any other side projects or any side projects that you're currently working on or they're in the works that will be coming out sometime uh, either this year or early next year? Um, probably nothing that comes out this year, but there are a few things uh, in the works. Um, uh, the latest thing I was working on is this um, Finnish children's metal uh, band Heavy Source. Maybe you've heard of them. Yeah. Uh, right. Um, yeah, I've been doing some session work for, for them before as well, and, and some uh, guest solos, and, and again, for this upcoming album, I'll, I'll be doing some stuff there, or I've actually done it already. I'm not sure when it's going to be coming out. Um, that was the latest uh, session thing that I did. Um, then we have one project um, with the guys from the cover band that I'm in. The cover band is called Run for a Cover. And we, we've been doing uh, some local local shows in Finland uh, for uh, for a few years now. Uh, not not so many shows, but every once in a while, when everybody has time, then then some some shows. So it's 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 been a fun, different kind of project. And with those guys, uh, we've been also doing some own music. And uh, uh, the drums have been recorded for for an album. And uh, yeah, next we're going to be working on the guitars and basses and and then the vocals as well. Uh, it's not uh, no definite schedule yet, but but might be that that uh, maybe we try to release something like a single song or something uh, before the end of the year, uh, if possible. Now, now that project will will the album be of covers or of your own material? That's that's totally all uh, own material. Maybe maybe one cover uh, included there, but, but basically on on music. Um, so that's that's the kind of uh, uh, main side project that has been going on lately then uh, every once in a while i do just the uh, session stuff guest solos for or or uh, some some uh, special projects that uh, that i find interesting so every once in a while somebody contact, uh, uh, contacts me and asks you know i have this project would you like to would you like to play on this and then i you know i listen to it and if it's if it's interesting music for me and then if i have the time then we then we figure out together if it, if it works or not. I have two more questions for you before we wrap this up. I, I would be um, a fool not to ask you a sauna related question. Uh, how cool would it be for tour buses to have their own built in saunas for Finnish bands? That, that would be an idea for sure. Uh, in Finland, they actually do have these uh, like trailer saunas, which you. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Behind your bus, so um, uh, I'm pretty sure they don't have those in North America. Otherwise, we probably would have uh, thought about getting one. But uh, yeah, um, maybe if, if uh, yeah, if somebody did that, that could be a, a hit for the Finnish bands to to rent that kind of bus. Yeah, I, I think I'm gonna have to somehow trademark that idea because I think there would definitely be a market for it, for especially when Finnish bands come to North America. Now, the last question I have for you uh, is, like I said before, I, I follow you on social media. I see what you post on Instagram. You're a super busy guy. I mean, between Winter Sun, Winter Sun shows, guitar lessons, in person, online, side project, um, uh, cover band, between all of that, you still find some time to travel, take some cool pictures of some sceneries where you travel to, of some, some hot meal breakfasts with cereals and strawberries. Some places you travel to are absolutely amazing. The pictures are phenomenal. Uh, do you have, I'm assuming travel is a huge hobby for you, uh, but do you have 
hobbies, things that you like to occupy any little free time that you have, which I'm assuming is not much, but you have hobbies like that you have that you enjoy doing that kind of keep your mind away from music and keep you balanced in your life? Um, well, a lot of stuff that does uh, revolve around the, the music and the guitars. I like to tinker with the guitars and collect a little bit and you know, adjust the guitars and, and uh, sometimes do little repairs and stuff like that, which is often, uh, some might think of it as work, but it's actually kind of uh, relaxing. It's so so different thing than that what I what I often do the other day. So so that kind of already gives a bit of balance. Then then uh, watching movies. I love watching movies and just uh, unwinding, uh, kind of uh, doing that. And uh, um, sports. Sports in general is something that. Uh, well, I have to ask you, what's what's your favorite sport? Um, I've got so many things that I that I love doing. Uh, I used to play ice hockey for, for a long time, uh, soccer, um, um, floorball. I played in a team as well. Um, lately, it's been a lot of like uh, outdoor workout stuff. You know, um, a bit of jogging, um, some calisthenic stuff. You know. Um, um, yeah, uh, most of the sports stuff I find uh, fun to do, like tennis, uh, badminton, a bit of basketball. You're a well-rounded individual. <laughs> <That's nice. laughs> I, I, it, seriously, I, I honestly, following you on Instagram is a huge joy for anybody who's watching this who doesn't follow you. I highly recommend to, to find you on Instagram. And start following you because you post a lot of cool content you post a lot of great stuff and uh, it, it really allows for the fans a little bit of a glimpse not only into your life but into the life of the band and that's from a fan's perspective i think that's very appreciated thanks glad, glad to hear you enjoy it uh, uh, also it's sometimes nice for myself for example documenting some some stuff that happens at the venues and then you know uh, Keeping that as a reminder for me when I go there next time, then I can check what what was this place and, and where where do I find that backstage here? <laughs> and it's kind of sometimes nice for myself as well to to, to do that kind of uh, stories and that stuff. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to sit down with me today to talk a little bit about Winter Sun, about yourself, about this North American tour. Uh, I'm going to post, uh, when I post this video on YouTube, I'm going to post the dates of the North American tours on the description. I'll post the links where people can find the tickets, get in contact with you guys. If the VIP package stuff is already available, I'll post that as well. I want to make sure everybody watching this, and especially everybody in North America, attends these shows. I want to see packed houses. I know the Toronto show is going to be insane. I know the Montreal is almost sold out. So I, I expect this tour to be absolutely insane. Thank you. Thank you for the support.